in five, 10 years, we might view a podcast as we did a website. Like it's just, it's a given that as, as a business, you just have one. That's your channel to communicate to the world. Business of Architecture, episode 345. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architecture practice that lets you do your best work more often. Today's guest is Adam Steiner. He's third in a generational line of home builders, and as such, this industry, as he likes to say, is in his blood. From early on, he knew he loved homes, design, and building. And after a decade and a half of working as a lead designer for various builders, he ventured out on his own. As the owner of Burnham Design Company and the podcast Builder vs. Buyer, his mission is to take the mystery out of the home building process through sharing his experience. I wanted to have Adam on the show here today, first of all, because he's been a longtime podcast listener, and it's always a joy for me to bring on people who have been influenced by the podcast and have them on as guests, follow their success, but also that Adam himself has started up his own podcast, Builder vs. Buyer. And I wanted to ask him about that and hopefully share with you some valuable tips and insights in case you've ever considered starting your own podcast. Well, Adam, great to have you on today with us here on the Business of Architecture podcast. It's a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank you for having great sound. This is because you actually run a podcast yourself, Builder versus Buyer. Yes, yes, I do. It's um, it's been a very fun and exciting arm of my business that, um, yeah, a, a neat field to explore, as I'm sure you're aware. What was it that prompted you to start a podcast? Um, I mean, to be completely frank, like I wanted to build a brand, build my business. Um, and I realized we're at the, the internet age when just a website isn't going to cut it. Like, I'm sure you've come to this conclusion, obviously, as well, that, um, yeah, the your internet profile is much more than your website. So I started looking to, okay, I'm, I'm not the person that's going to do video editing and make it, you know, super high production value, but I know I can talk and I really enjoy that process. Had some sound equipment. I'm like, I think that's a good place to start. Let's just get something off the ground and get it going. Um, yeah. There's a lot of ways to brand your firm, to get your name out there. Obviously, you said you didn't necessarily want to do video. It required video processing, and you felt comfortable doing the podcast. But why, why, why a podcast? Um, and like the one thing I, the conclusion I came to is like I think I want to help people. Like, um, what I found. So I spent uh sixteen, seventeen years in the home building industry, working for home builders, and what I found is like this weird dynamic where clients would walk into a home builder, they're automatically skeptical. And I felt like I was working at builders that did things the right way and like cared for people and wanted to do a good job and not screw people over. And so we're still getting clients walking in the door, super skeptical, not, not like trusting of us. Like the heels are already dug in day one. And then on the builder side, because of that, like, I don't know if it was conditioning through that, but then you're walking on pins and needles. Okay. If I say anything wrong around any client, it's going to be thrown back in my face. We might be potential lawsuit. And like, I just felt like from the industry, it was, it was always tense and always, it it felt way too frustrating for what it needed to be. So I wanted this podcast to be a place where sides could come together and really peel back the curtain to, okay, this is how home builders operate. This is why they're doing these things. This is why they're saying these things. I hope this is helpful in your search. And then also some insights for home builders. Hey, here are a handful of things you can do to be better. This is why this client is frustrated about X, Y, and Z. Um, Yeah, and um, I also think there's, I'm sure you've seen it on the architecture side between builders and architects and architects and engineers. Like there's a stereotype out there for a reason that we're not really all on the same team. Um, So I, yeah. I know I'm not going to single-handedly change the home building industry, but I hope in some small way I can make it a little bit better. And is the target for your podcast, would it be the end user, the buyer, so to speak, or are you targeted more towards the builders or both or something else? Yeah, I, I've, I've toyed with this over, over the few months I've been running it, and I've been targeting episodes to both. Um, 
both the end user, the, the client that's building the home and home builders, depending on the content and what I, what I have to say. Um, I think that someday I will pick a lane and stick to it, but I'm not there yet. Um, I'm still exploring both channels. Great. And what would you say would be the hardest part about getting your podcast started? Um, I, I would say like, I just listenership, like getting, getting it out there. Um, and like, I feel like the ideas are there and surprisingly people are more than willing to come on and share their opinions. Like it's been, that's been really, um, a neat surprise to it. Um, but just the, the grind of, um, the channels to send your, your name out into the world and, and get people to, to listen and jump on board. And what's your preferred format for the episodes? Do you like to do the interview format like this? Do you like to do sharing content, educational information for your target audience? What's your preferred format? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, so there's been most of the episodes are sharing content specifics on home building process. Like I did a mini series on what to expect if you're building with a production builder, semi custom builder and custom, like what are, what are the differences you're going to see there? Um, and then there's been plenty that are interview based, um, seeking out people in the industry to, um, really bring their insights. I'm not an expert in every field. Um, so getting people on that are, asking some really specific questions as far as, I mean, we did one on septic fields with a septic inspector, like really knowing all the, the ins and outs of the building industry and things you need to be looking for. For, for some of our listeners or architects who may be considering a podcast, which I think is an excellent way to, to meet people. It's an excellent way to grow your network. It's an excellent way to share your expertise and it's an excellent way to get your message out there, what would you suggest to be some of the first things they should consider if they're thinking about starting um, a podcast? I, yeah, I would say first off, like it's not that hard. Like don't freak out about it. Um, the gear doesn't cost too much to get podcasts on Spotify and Apple and all the channels isn't that hard. It's a, it's a couple quick Google searches. Don't be intimidated of it. Um, and then I would say like, get a good jot down as many ideas as you can. Um, ideas are so crucial and you don't need to flesh every single idea out first, but what do you want to talk about? What do you find helpful? Um, and then just reach out to people. Like I said, it's been surprising how, how frequent the yeses are and how infrequent the no's are for people to come on the podcast. Um, people that I'd be surprised, you know, I started with my connections and then expanded the circle a little bit more and more. And people I'm surprised remembered me and, you know, national consultants where I'm like, Hey, what, what are you doing coming on my little podcast? But, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really neat. So I would say, don't be afraid to one start and two reach out and get, you know, get yourself in front of people. Got it. And how is it you feel that it's impacted your business? Any measurable results or how would you say it's impacted or is it more of a labor of love at this stage? Yeah, it's still, it's still a labor of love. Um, I'm, my goal is to build a base and then start to approach potential clients as, as though I would want them on. So home builders that I think that I really want to work with go out and um, get them as my guests on this podcast. Um, so I'm still in the, the base building stage. I will say like, just from an awareness st standpoint, I feel like it's really, um, really grown my brand, um, much more than just word of mouth. It's so much easier to start a conversation with somebody with a podcast versus, Hey, I want to do all your drawings for you. Um, you know, just it's, um, it's, it's been really, really good in that respect. Got it. Got it. So tell me about, so you were trained as a civil engineer. You studied that in school, yep. went out and somehow started working for a home builder. How did that process happen? Was that the job you were looking for? Did you fall into it? Yeah, fell into it. Um, so I had taken a couple CAD classes in high school. Then my dad ran a home building company, which got bought out and he didn't have any employees um, and wanted to start a new one. So my sophomore, junior year of college, I was his one and only home designer. 
um, got to design all his homes from scratch. Like really like at those eight days didn't really know what I was doing. Um, just figuring out as I go. Um, and so worked for him for about a decade and then a couple builders since then. Um, and then the beginning of this year started my own, um, business. Got it. You know, what would you think from your perspective, being on the home builder side of the aisle, what is the, what is the role or what's the place for architects in the residential design world? Yeah, I would. So I've been thinking about this a lot and I, I don't mean to be inflammatory here. I hope this is helpful. I, I know most of your audience is architects. And what I hear, like when I meet with a home builder, I will usually get the question, are you a licensed architect? And I'm like, well, no, I'm not. You know, I studied civil engineering in there. And oddly enough, the builder will voice to me, oh, I'm glad you're not an architect. Um, and like, I think that I say that to like, hopefully help architects. Like there's, there's a red flag. I think there's something you guys are missing if the the home building industry you know it's it's happened enough to me where I, I feel like it's probably more builders opinions than not and i think i think what it is what that builder is saying is i think an architect would be overpriced and overdrawn and so i i think the helpful thing i can add here is help if you're an architect and you feel like a builder doesn't want to work with you because your price is high or because you draw more details or whatever it is, help that builder to know why it is you're higher. And I, I think it's the golden age of being able to do that with YouTube videos, podcasts, like find a way to, to help us understand why you're more, why those details are there. Um, why that helps the building process. Don't, don't just hope they're going to pay you more because you are trained, you know? Yeah. Now, somewhere in the past, there was a schism between the actual construction of buildings and architects. And let's face it, home design over the years has had, I mean, over the centuries, has, first of all, mainly been people constructing their own homes. Yeah. Right? It wasn't until late in the 1800s that architects actually began to be involved in home design, usually just for the very privileged and for the very elite members of society that could afford to hire an architect. And so then you have the craftsmen, the builders on one side of the table, and you have the architects on the other side. And architects come from a design background. They come from uh, very high attention to detail. Uh, they really look at it in terms of, I want to say artistic perspective, but that's probably not the right word uh, because it encompasses everything that we as human thinks of as beauty, right? Being able to yeah. use the palette of materials, being able to, use the palette of space in a way that that becomes you know the the parts become well the whole becomes more than the sum of the parts right yeah and you're right uh, builders a lot of times coming from the construction background yeah i've worked for a lot of builders i know i understand their mentality they're like man we just got to put some crown molding in here we're going to put some baseboard on and it doesn't matter to me where the baseboard's that or the other you know it all kind of all looks the same to me and so there's this this schism and this different way of looking at things. I'm curious, do you see any... Now, architect services do cost more because there's a lot more design, a lot more detailing that goes into those kind of projects, generally speaking. Uh, do you think there's any place for architects in production housing and in housing for the masses as opposed to just the uh, the wealthy or the uber wealthy? Yeah, that's that's where I think... like. I so much, the, the architects I know, like I so much love and respect their attention to art and their attention to detail. Like I want to learn from that and grow in that. And like, I think that really does belong. Like if, if the architecture community is going to say, okay, production isn't for us, then production is left to the race to the bottom. Like I feel like architects do belong in that production community to, to really bring some life to it. Like, most Americans live in some form of a production home, right? So if you want to affect most of the population, like we can be working and you can be working on projects like that. Like I think there's a way to design production better, you know, think of space better. And um, yes, they're always going to be concerned with cost, but I think a good architect would be able to 
balance that equation between cost and beauty and um, really bring some value to builders that are building thousands of homes a year um, to really like, I feel like that's going to most affect the most people. Got it. Got it. Well, where do you see the home building going as an industry from your perspective? What are some of the changes you've seen and where do you see things going in the future? Ooh, interesting question. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's a weird time in the market right now because there is home builders carry so much risk and stress to make a dollar. So yeah, it is, it is lucrative and there's, there's a, there's a good dollar to be made if you're good at it, but that risk and stress is scaring a lot out of the market. So like, I think the people that will get into home building these next 10 to 15 years are, are going to be less than what we saw in the last couple decades. Um, so I, yeah, I think there is a really good opportunity there. Um, I, I will say things like permitting costs and fees and, and things that are driving up housing costs are, are another thing that's going to, you know, as it gets less lucrative, um, and there's, there's more things to pay out and the profit margins get smaller. Yeah. It will force more builders out, which, you know, balance out market. But, um, so yeah, I, I do think it's an interesting time for home building because there, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that could be gained there. Got it. Adam, my last question for you today is what kind of business would you recommend a podcast for having done one yourself? What kind of business would I recommend a podcast? Yeah, for? Well, let's say, you know, what kind of architecture firm would you recommend it for all of them? Would you recommend it for ones that want to achieve certain things? Um, I, I think, I think the key is to get out there some way. So if you're not comfortable speaking and you're a great writer, I wouldn't stress about making a podcast. Um, but if you are comfortable speaking, it's a really great way to have engagement, engage your clients. Um, like you said, build connections. Um, so yeah, I would say any type of architecture firm could be, could be benefit benefited from it. Um, I also kind of think that in five, 10 years, we might view a podcast as we did a website. Like it's just, it's a given that as, as a business, you just have one and that's, that's your channel to communicate to the world. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think it's for just about everybody if you're comfortable with it. Fantastic. Well, Adam, thank you for sharing with us about your, uh, your journey starting a podcast and how that's been for you and uh, your experience in the, the world of, of design, construction, and, and everything else. Enoch, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.